I was born in Rector, Arkansas, which is a very small town uh, up in the northeast corner of Arkansas. And when I was in the second grade, I started taking piano lessons, which I continued all the way through high school. And even into college, I was a classical pianist. And so my hands played a big part in my life. I really didn't ever think about people who were disabled. I, it just never crossed my mind. I guess I thought I was invincible. I never gave a thought, you know, to getting sick or ever having anything happen to me. When I uh, got my diagnosis, the neurologist didn't really have much of a bedside manner. He just told me right off the bat that I had chronic progressive multiple sclerosis and he painted a pretty bleak picture for me. Well, it took me a long time to get out of that depression. And when I got back to Memphis, um, I met some people for the first time with MS because when I was in California, I didn't know anyone with MS. And um, I met a man who had MS, but he was really very positive. He laughed a lot and he got me started laughing. And uh, together we started a support group called Love and Determination. And uh, that gave me kind of a different purpose, a new purpose in my life. I had started losing the use of my hands quite a bit. And that was really the biggest blow to me when I lost the use of my hands, more so than the use of my legs because, like I said, I'd been a classical pianist and a medical transcriptionist for my career. And so my hands were such a big part of my life. Liz Campbell, uh, and I went to the same church, and uh, we became friends. She was a wonderful artist. And one day Liz and I were talking about her art, and I really don't know where the sentence came from, but it just popped out of my mouth. I think it might be fun to paint with my mouth. And um, it was kind of like, I think my guardian angel just made that sentence come out of my mouth. Liz went to my church and unbeknownst to me she did this and uh, told them that I wanted wanted to learn to paint with my mouth. A lot of people donated money. Uh, someone donated me an easel and a table to paint with and I was just overcome. Uh, Liz came to my house and uh, she brought uh, samples of different art mediums that I could use. And uh, I tried the ones she brought and decided on pastel pencils to start with. And she just sat down with the art catalog and ordered everything I needed. About a, a year later, I was still using the supplies that the church had provided for me. Liz happened to be in her dentist's office she told him about me, and he just happened to have a calendar from the mouth and foot painting artists, and he told her to ask me to contact them. And we were both pretty skeptical about it. Liz, Liz didn't really think that, that I was proficient enough to be accepted by them, and I really didn't either, but I went ahead and I submitted um, I think I had to submit six drawings and of course a doctor's statement saying that I was indeed disabled. And then for the final thing they flew someone to my home and I had an interview and lo and behold I was accepted. I get the source for my drawings I'm always looking around in magazines and um, just anywhere for ad ideas for things 
to draw. And uh, sometimes I'll take a couple of pictures and incorporate them together. You know, something from one picture with something from another picture. And I start off with a sketch. I use just a plain pencil. And first I, I sketch the whole, the whole picture that I'm gonna draw. And um, then for many years, what I've used is pastel pencils. And that's how I lay the color down on, on the picture. Sometimes, because of my disability, I'm not able to lean forward and reach, you know, different corners of the picture. And um, so I, I have someone that helps me and they will move the paper in a, in a different, um, at a different angle so that I can reach what I need to work on. I, I sometimes paint with the picture upside down and sideways and you know, whatever it takes but there's always a way that you can get to what you need to get to. Okay, recently, I've decided that I want to learn acrylics painting. Um, I love the pastel pencils, but I can't bear down real hard on them with my mouth. So the paintings are not as vibrant as I would like them to be. And with the acrylic paint, it is, you know, I don't have to bear down because I do it with a paintbrush. And the colors are just so vibrant that I'm really enjoying working with it. I have a long way to go with acrylics because I'm just beginning, but I really am enjoying it. The Mouth and Foot Painting Artist is just, it's a wonderful organization that offers you the opportunity to be able to do something you really enjoy and also offers you the opportunity to move up in, in the association so that you'll be able to actually support yourself again and support yourself in style. The association has three levels, student member, associate member, and full member. And at associate member, and full member, you receive a monthly salary, which is a nice, nice salary. And it allows you to live on your own independently, be able to hire people, you know, to help you. In other words, you can live independently, even with all the added um, costs of living with a disability. And a full member, that salary is guaranteed for life, even if you get to the point where you can't paint any longer. Being a mouth painter means that I have a new creative outlet. My music was my creative outlet for so many years, and I lost that. And now I have the opportunity to be creative in a different outlet. And um, I just can't say what it feels like when you've finished a picture that's in front of you and you can look at it and see what it looks like. And you know, it, it just gives you a tremendous amount of satisfaction. And it makes you feel like you're really a worthwhile person again, not just someone disabled. You know, you feel like, hey, I still have value. I still have worth.